Hey guys, this is GB Wang, and I'm going to be giving you um, uh, another follow-up video to the first video that I had posted, which was the unbeatable TVZ kind of a build. And so, uh, for this, uh, for the purposes of this video, I just wanted to talk about some of the nuances that go behind the design of this build, as well as other things that um, miscellaneous things that you should also pay attention to um, when you're executing this build. So. One of the things is I had actually come up with this build before I started watching Destiny's stream, but if you've ever watched his stream, you know that there's a popular build that he calls his unbeatable ZVZ. And the idea behind it is it's kind of like a, a seven roach rush and uh, with speedling follow-up. And it's designed to push at kind of a similar time as this uh, as this Thor build as well. And so when I looked back at this Thor build, I was thinking, you know, this um, this Thor build with Hellion follow-up is essentially analogous to what Destiny is doing. The idea being that the Thors um, are these units with a lot of um, you know hit points, so they can they can uh, tank a lot, just like the Roaches. And then when you have the uh, the Hellions, um, they're essentially better versions of Zerglings because they also have more hit points and they can do more damage once the uh, the blue flame comes on. So it's kind of um, analogous to that I to that idea. The other reason too is um one of the things you might ask yourself is why would you want to choose to use this build as opposed to other you know TBZ kind of builds? And there there's several reasons. One is that this uh, this build is actually remarkably easy to execute because you don't have to do anything until about the nine minute mark. Like there's no pushing or no harassing and there's actually a reason for that and um and also so it's very easy to execute it's good for players of all levels and it's just insanely difficult to stop but also um it, it, there's kind of like a conceptual principle involved as well like if any of you guys have ever played a zvz matchup you know that the the matchup is highly volatile even like a few minor mistakes like having your speedling research come up you know five seconds later than the other guy it can actually be like a game uh, like a game defining kind of a moment and so it's very volatile because zerg is kind of like a momentum based creature and so in some ways this build reminds me of it. And the reason for that is because when you execute this build properly, the Zerg player has no idea what you're actually building. It's one of the advantages of being Terran. Like you can put Marines all across, you know, these different ledges to prevent overlords from coming in. And so by the time that Zerg player actually figures out what you're doing is when you already have three Thor with reinforcing Hellions going into his base. And so the death ball has already been massed. The Zerg player hasn't even had time to react or mobilize yet until it's too late and so you're pretty much pushing that momentum um, decisively in your favor in such a way that it pretty much wins the game and so that's also one of the nice things about this build um, the other thing too is in terms of unit counters the the sad part is for Zerg is that there is no hard counter for Thor like you can use Lings, but a few Lings by themselves can't stop Thor. A few Roaches by themselves can't stop Thor either. Banelings are absolutely horrible. The only real counters to Thor are Broodlords, which, if you upgrade your Thors properly, they're not even that great of a counter. And then, um, and also the um, the Ultralisk, which pretty much goes toe to toe with the Thor, but um, it's not really like a direct counter either. But the thing is, um, these units don't come until much later in the game and they're essentially irrelevant for the purposes of our discussion here. And so, um, so again, so you're using these units that are inherently difficult for Zerg to counter, and you're also using these SEVs for auto repair, which is just, it's incredibly imbalanced in this kind of matchup. And, um, and, and so that's pretty much it. Um, for those viewers who haven't seen my first video, the first video talks about how to actually execute this build, and um, uh, but just kind of a quick recap, after you put down your first supply depot, you make sure you throw up a refinery because this is a gas first build, that way you can get your factory and your armory up a little bit faster as well. And so that's pretty much the main uh, the main thing. Uh, with this build in terms of uh, of openings. Other thing I want to point out too on this map is because we're on Shadow Temple, there's one thing that's really obnoxious that the Zerg player can do, and he can actually fly an Overlord over to this high ground to the left of the command center, and from there he can see how many SEVs you have, how much um, gas you've mined, and so forth, which is absolutely terrible, and there's nothing you can do about it. Like, you can actually lift up a flying building and send a Marine over here, but most of the time um, the Marine doesn't have enough range to deal with the overlords. So you want to be careful uh, of hiding your armory, especially if you see that. 
I didn't see that in this situation, and so I just put the armory over here. If there is a like an overlord spying over here, if you're kind of suspicious of it, you can always proxy the armory. And in this matchup, um, I would have probably put the armory over here, or just put it kind of in a weird area over here as well, because you don't want to give away the surprise. Although sometimes when you give away the surprise, they still can't do anything about it, which is kind of kind of funny. Um, so right now, nothing much is going on. I'm still making some marines, and as you see, I have a nice spread throughout my base, making sure that I can deny any scouting information, and I have two Thors coming up. When the three Thors come out, I push out. And so you might want to, you might wonder, you know, why, why do an all-in in this situation? And the reason why is, like, the way I look at these matchups is, when you're playing on ladder, the opponent that you get matched up with, odds are he's going to be in the same league and the matchup is going to be considered even. So I take that to mean that there's about a 50-50% chance that you can win the game. But the thing is, that probability is very, um, it's variable throughout the course of the game. Like if you were a Zerg player and you um, did a six pool all in on a Protoss player, if you executed it correctly, your chance of winning is probably like about 90%. Um, if the seven roach rush window comes up and you use it, your chance of winning might be like 65% or something like that. And when four gate comes up, your chance of winning might be 30%. So everything is kind of variable. But And that's why you go all in because you're hitting at this nine minute mark. This is a really critical mar mark for Zerg. So as you can see, in this situation, he's going to try to break the rocks and attempt to take a third. Sometimes um, this is like around the period where they might start, um, you know, they have their lair ready and they might start planting down a spire. In any case, you're hitting them at this very vulnerable moment, which increases your chance of winning, but then when you put the SCVs there and you go all in, especially with the auto repair, it just increases your chances even more. And so I kind of issue an ultimatum to this guy. I tell him, you know, you survive, you win, knowing full well he's not going to survive. And if you look over here, without any scouting information, he actually threw down um, two spore crawlers at his expansion, as well as two spore crawlers in his main. So you can tell he was afraid of banshees. And most of the time, that's what Zerg players are afraid of. And so pretty much in this battle, you can see it's really ugly. I didn't lose a single Thor. And this is what usually happens without losing a single Thor. And um, he has no, he has no no choice but to go attack with the drones, which obviously is a pretty futile attempt. And so that's pretty much the game for him. Um, I think I think he ends up um, he ends up leaving pretty soon as well. Once his natural goes down, there's really nothing else he can do. Um, so that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I did want to want to touch on in this game is that in terms of map control, if you noticed um, in this game, I was actually being incredibly passive. You know, I, I could have, you can actually with this build, you can get out of Hellion before you crank out your first Thor. But the thing is, I don't want map control, and I also don't want to pose any threat to the Zerg player, because if you do, then you're just going to encourage them to make units. And the thing is, because this is an all-in build, you want to um, encourage them to keep making more drones. 40 drones, 60 drones, that's great, because because what that means is they're not going to have any army to deal with this, so it only makes your push more effective. And that's why I don't, um, I don't really use any pressure. The only other thing, too, is when I scout... Um, you know, I'm only looking for an expo. If there's no expo, you should be thinking 10 pool or 7 roach rush or something along those lines, like an all-in, in which case, throw up a bunker immediately. Um, your goal is pretty much to survive, because if you can survive and you get the Thors out, even if it's a little bit later, you win the game. So that's pretty much it for this presentation. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and, um, and it'll help you uh, kick some serious butt in your TVZ matchups. Thanks for listening, and I'll have more content uh, soon enough.